Council. And anyone who's joining us tonight, we really uh, appreciate your attendance. So this is a, a pretty historic evening for Innisfil and actually for all Ontario municipalities. Uh, up until last week, um, this would not be something that the government would contemplate, uh, allowing a full uh, virtual meeting of council, uh, given the unprecedented circumstances that we're in. Minister Clark last week passed a special order to allow for virtual council meetings. So I want to welcome you all, whether you're a part of council, staff, or the uh, members of the public, thank you so much for attending this evening. On the screen, you will see the members of council and uh, on, the, on the black pieces with the names are the staff that are here with us tonight too. And I want you to please be patient with us. This is a first for all of us. And so it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to and uh, just bear with us and we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to start by uh, the normal statement that I give everybody, which is telling you that this meeting is both audio and video recorded and shall form part of the record, which will be retained according to the town's retention bylaw. And for more information about that collection, please contact the clerk's office. Now, normally at this time, I would also tell you to mute your um, cell phones uh, to make sure that they aren't going to disturb you. And I'll also at this point tell you to make sure that the door is closed so somebody's not going to run by in their underwear. So we'll get started first um, by saying that um, this is such a, a fluid environment we're in right now and I really appreciate the calm and leadership that council has given to members of the public during this time. Um, it's a difficult time for everyone. We feel for those who are sick and, and those who have lost loved ones and just for the level of anxiety and fear that's in our community right now. Um, Dr. Gartner did, um, he does a Facebook live at one o'clock each day to give an update from the medical officer of health's office. And uh, the big event today that he wanted uh, everyone to understand is that we are now getting community spread in Simcoe Muskoka. So that means is we're getting cases of confirmed COVID-19 that have not traveled and that have not been in direct contact with someone with COVID. So what that means now is there is, we're acquiring it, we're acquiring it throughout the community and we need to be extra vigilant at this time. He's asking that we, whether or not we've traveled, if we start to develop symptoms, cold or resp respiratory symptoms, that we immediately self-isolate for 14 days or until the symptoms are gone, whichever is longest. So we'll uh, be conveying more of that information out to the community, but I wanted to uh, let you know of that today. Also today, the Federal Minister of Health, Minister Haidu, um, enacted part of the Federal Quarantine Act, meaning that um, while we were strongly encouraging people who'd arrived from out of country to self-isolate for 14 days, now it is no longer an ask, it is a you must self-isolate for 14 days if you have uh, recently arrived from another country. I want to give a great big thank you to staff uh, who have just done an outstanding job of getting us to where we are today uh, to, to be hosting our very first uh, virtual council meeting, but also just for the, for the relatively streamlined process into getting all of our uh, staff set up to work remotely. Uh, we are moving very quickly towards business as usual, even though it's e-business versus face-to-face -face business. And our essential services are doing an outstanding job. I will um, just take a moment and read to you, if I could, 
an email that I just received uh, about an hour ago. And it says, I would like if you would please extend my heartfelt thank you to all of the amazing people who are working in the face of this pandemic and behind the scenes to provide services to our residents. These essential services providers need to know that we recognize the very real danger that they are facing and appreciate their incredible efforts to care for all of us. When it's safe to do so, it would be wonderful to have an opportunity for the community to show their appreciation. So we'll put that on our to-do list is to make sure that we're able to do that. So for all our staff, be it uh, police and fire and operations that are that are out facing all of this, but also for the behind the scenes staff, I know customer service support are dealing with folks phoning in that are, you know, more anxious um, and fearful than normal, and they're doing a great job um, dealing with those as well. So having said that, I will now open the meeting and the first. Um, motion if I can find my council meeting so the first motion is the approval of the agenda and the recommendation is that the contents of the special agenda from March 25th 2020 be approved as printed and that's moved by Councillor Van Burkle and seconded by Councillor Nickel any, is there any agenda repair required? Seeing none, all those in favor? That's carried unanimously. And can I tell you that it's easier for me to see your hands in this format than it is when we're sitting at the council table. So next I would ask, is there any, Councillor Nickel? Yeah, I think you're still on mute, Councillor Nickel. Sorry, Your Worship, not a, a disclosure of interest or, or anything like that. Just for the benefit of the rest of council, as this is such a brand new process, I did pull up the YouTube uh, channel and it's just the nine of us that are up on screen. So although we see the rest of the executive staff, on, uh, the, the general public only see the nine of us, just so everybody knows. Okay, thank you for that, that's important. And what I've asked staff to do is when the, uh, if there's a counsel to a staff person, they'll unmute their camera and come on to answer the question. And this just makes it easier for me so I can only see council faces so I don't have, you know, the clerk voting and counting them as a vote. So I'll ask again if there's any disclosures of interest and I'm seeing none. So we'll move to our first business item 4.1 is a staff report and I'll read the recommendation, get a mover and a seconder, and then we'll have discussion on that recommendation. So it's staff report DSR-047-20 regarding amend procedure bylaw for electronic participation during emergencies dated March the 25th, 2020 be received and that bylaw number 021-20 be approved. Now have a mover. De Deputy Mayor Davidson and a seconder, Councillor Payne. Any questions, comments about this process? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? That's also carried unanimously. Next is item 4.2. Now 4.2 is a very long recommendation. So I'm, I'm going to read it all through if if you bear with me, just so people who are watching have the opportunity to understand it. I'll take a mover and a seconder. And then what we could do just to make it a little bit easier for everyone is to go through each of the sections one by one. So the recommendation is that council receives staff report DSR-048-20 dated March the 25th, 2020 regarding the town's initial response to the COVID-19 pandemic, which has quickly become Canada's most significant crisis in recent memory. Two, that council acknowledges that staff have put on hold the tax registration process for new and existing properties, resulting ultimately in a potential tax sale between the period of March, first, March to June, 2020, and three, that interest and penalty charges on outstanding property taxes be temporarily waived 
for March through June 30, 2020, and that bylaw 026-20 be approved to give effect to the recommendation. That the following provisions of the fees and charges bylaw number 071-18 as amended, Schedule B, be temporarily suspended until June 30th, 2020. A, item 2.3, returned item charge, $38. B, item 2.9, withdraw of post dated checks, $12. C, item 9.81, zoning compliance letter, $145. Item D, item 9.3 sub B, draft plan of subdivision conditions extension, $1,150. Five, that the following provisions of the fees and charges bylaw number 07118 as amended schedule B be temporarily suspended until July 31st, 2020. A, item 2.8 reactivation fee for pre-authorized payment plans, $22. Six, that the indexings of the development charge rates be delayed from April 1st to July 1st, 2020. And seven, that council receives the recommendation from the Board of In-Services Utilities Incorporated and approves the waiving of the interest and penalty charges related to the water and wastewater services prescribed under bylaw 035-19, section 18 and 19 for those in need and request assistance as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic impacts for March through June, 2020. Could I have a mover and a seconder to get that on the floor? Councillor Fowler and Councillor Waters. And now we'll start with the first section, which uh, talks about um, receiving the staff report and, and it being our initial response to the pandemic, which has quickly become Canada's most significant crisis in recent memory. Comments or questions on that section? I have a, a couple of comments I'd like to make. Um, I like the fact that it says initial response because as you know, at four o'clock this afternoon, the province, uh, Minister Phillips uh, presented his economic statement and there was some new numbers in there as well. So we're going to need some time to go through that to see um, what impacts that has on what we've uh, put forward so far and if there's duplication or if maybe there's an enhancement we can do. But, uh, you know, given the time that we've had to work on this and knowing that we are going to, uh, you know, be able to look at it again as things evolve. As you know, this, this uh, pandemic has, uh, it changes hourly. So we need to be, I think we need to be very nimble and agile and be able to pivot when we need to in this circumstance. Seeing no other comments on that section, then I'll move to section two that says that council acknowledges that staff have put on hold the tax registration process for new and existing properties, resulting ultimately in a potential tax sale between the period of March to June, 2020. Questions or comments? Did any staff member have anything they'd like to add to that section? Uh, Mr. Rayner? Meeting your worship. Uh, no, we, um, it's worded that way just to help uh, us understand and the community understand that we're not moving forward, um, but there's no actual approval from council required. That's why it's worded uh, in that way of acknowledging at this time. Uh, just based on the process related to tax sales. Thank you, Worship. Thank you. The next section, that interest and penalty charges on outstanding property taxes be temporarily waived for March through June 30, 2020, and that the bylaw 026-20 be approved to give effect to the recommendation. Questions or comments on that section? So I actually had a comment on that section as well. And that was in regards to um, an amendment uh, to that particular motion. First of all, I thought it would make more sense to add um, March 1st through to June 30th, because it's a little less ambiguous. 
if you added um, added that date in there. And I was also um, hoping to ask the mover and seconder for a friendly amendment to include a clause that would allow the treasurer the ability to extend, to give him um, delegated authority to extend an additional 60 days if required. Could I have them ask the mover and seconder if they agree with that? Mover and seconder was uh, Councillor Waters. Okay, so um, the, the reason I'm asking for that is because again, we don't know where this is going. We don't know how long it's going to be around. And, uh, and that would allow staff, if appropriate, to extend the um, waiving of these temporary, uh, waiving of the penalty charges. Um, any other questions or comments on this section? Councillor Sadi. Thank you, Your Worship. I'm uh, just finding my uh, my unmute button here for a moment. It's a new new technique when we're handling multiple equipments. In this section, um, when I was reading the document on page 11 of it, it speaks about the uh, waiving of the penalty and the interest and stating that it does allow owners to, uh, although we're not deferring uh, taxes like other municipalities uh, in doing this, it allows residents um, to not pay until the end of June if that's necessary without any um, penalties and interest. And I'm just wondering from a staff perspective, um, it, it gets a little confusing. They need that statement um, and how we're going to um, give that message, clear message to the public in that. So we wanna encourage those that can pay their taxes to do it. Uh, the next payment for those that pay in two payments, the installment comes on April 29th um, so that they would have opportunity, but those that are struggling would be able to, from what I'm understanding, um, to not pay until they um, have the money and they will not be charged a penalty and an interest. Mr. Melanishan or Mr. Rayner? Your Worship, I can speak to the communication of that messaging and then uh, I'll ask uh, Mr. Uh, Melishan to speak to the actual uh, rationale behind the administrative recommendation to go this route, uh, which we appreciate is a little bit more complicated. From a communication perspective, um, we are comfortable informing the public that in fact, they don't have to pay their taxes until June. Um, and you can call that a deferral if you want to. From a technical perspective, it's that's not how we're processing it on, on the administrative and accounting side. But from a public perspective, that's the effect, uh, that people can pay their taxes um, as long as they pay by June 30th, unless council changes uh, that direction uh, in the future, as long as they pay by June 30th, and there will be no penalties or interests accrued on their account. Thank you, Worship. Mr. Melanishan? Uh, through you, Your Worship. Uh, yes, Councillor Sadi, the, the, the language is difficult. The complication is the administration of changing due dates and deadlines for, um, for tax due dates. It becomes a very complicated matter, impacting a lot of uh, administrative functions. And we made the decision that the ultimate impact was for, for residents to uh, not be charged interest and penalties. And this was the best way of doing it by allowing a waiver of all the penalties and interest on those. There is a communication that is going out that is a very detailed FAQ that, that is very simple and easy to understand that will assist residents uh, in, in interpreting that resolution. Thank you for that. Deputy Mayor. You're still muted, Deputy Mayor. Okay, there I am. Okay, my concern is that a lot of people may not be getting back to work till June. They're just going to be starting to get their checks in May from the government. My concern, if they, if they have to pay that in June and they're just getting back to work, they may not be able to pay that whole total off in June. Will they be charged penalty and interest after that period? Mr. Rayner? Your Worship, members of council, um, I, I think this is uh, where we get into this challenge of crystal balling. Um, and so our advice to you is to set a date so there's certainty and clarity at this point in time. 
with the best information we have available. But uh, the public should know and, and you should be uh, comfortable in knowing that we can revisit this closer to the date. So if in fact, uh, even next month in April, if it becomes clear that the uh, measures that are being taken by the province or the federal government uh, will extend well beyond that, um, or if for some reason we learn that EI payments are slowed down, then you can direct us and we will uh, certainly take your direction to extend that deadline even further. At this point, it's important to set a period of time that's not next week uh, so that we don't have to keep revisiting it, but at the same time, not too far out because we're not sure, you know, at this point, the school closure is still, as far as I know, uh, only for the, the three weeks, uh, the two weeks extra after March break, although we anticipate that that might get extended. Uh, but I haven't heard the order yet to extend at this point. Follow up. Sorry, okay, thanks, Lynn. Uh, my concern again, uh, being a small business owner, like other small business owners, our taxes are quite high compared to residential. Uh, they can add up to thousands of dollars a month. Uh, if your business is closed and you're opening and doing, there's where my concern. I really think small businesses are going to feel a real bang here when all of a sudden um, their taxes are due or I don't think a lot of people understand what deferral of a mortgage is, uh, mortgage payments. And I think if they look carefully at what their banks are offering them, a deferral means that payment needs to be made. It's just the interest is added on to their mortgage on top of interest on top of interest when they defer. Um, I'm just, my concern is, I guess, the small business trying to come up with thousands and thousands of dollars, a two month delay could be six or $10,000 for a small business. So each month. So I'm just concerned how we're going to, um, serve the small business industry, that's it. Thank you, Councillor Sadi. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I was thinking of, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor, is also um, that I'm sure that there will be part of a program where people can partially pay. So they don't, they don't wanna stack it up and have to pay a lot, but they can pay a little bit that helps lessen the the you know the the final payment later and um you know it, it it's a difficult time but i i just see that as hopefully that's one of the options and certainly encouraging those that that can pay to keep paying and those that need partial payments to make it and those that need to defer it would have that so i think the options are great a question about those um, that may come up from residents that pay their taxes through their mortgage. Uh, is that something that they would arrange with their bank um, in the deferred mortgage with the taxes at the same time? Or will that be explained uh, in this uh, process? Thanks, that's a good question. Uh, who would like to tackle that one about people who have their uh, mortgage or their taxes on their mortgage? Mr. Rayner? Your Worship, members of council, um, certainly we will be in touch with the financial institutions um, and uh, share the information that council uh, makes a decision on tonight uh, to work with them to sort through those logistics. Um, and uh, if our CFO wants to make any other comments, uh, he'd be welcome to at this time. Thank you, Worship. Uh, through, your worship through your Worship to council. Um, in response to Councillor Davidson's uh, comments about help for small business, there is significant help coming down from the uh, higher echelons of government. Um, from a town, we tried to capture the help for small businesses on the town website as well as innisfilaccelerate.ca. There's a significant amount of leaks, links out there that are, are going to help small businesses. And uh, I, I encourage small businesses to tap into that resource as well. We are working on some other initiatives uh, that will be rolled out in the next few weeks to further assist with small businesses and the implications that this, this crisis is, is happening and impacting them. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Waters. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, one thing we're just wondering whether or not for small business and residents if they've lost their income 
and they end up accumulating taxes. And for small businesses, it can be quite significant whether or not staff could consider the idea of maybe amortizing those uh, taxes over the long haul as opposed to having to pay it by the end of the year. We'll amortize that over the next, next two or three years. And that way it's not such a big chunk for either a homeowner or a business owner because you know this could be quite significant for them and they have no income to, to make up for that. So it might be something staff considers uh, a way of dealing with that down the road. Mr. Rayner. Thank you, Worship, through you to Councillor Waters. Um, that's a great suggestion, Councillor, and uh, we are working on a number of other uh, options uh, to present to you uh, at the next uh, council meeting uh, in April. Uh, and certainly that could be one of the pieces we could speak to is uh, payment plan uh, options. Um, I will tell you that even now, uh, our objective is for people to pay their taxes. Uh, and so even people that fall significantly behind in arrears we work with them to create payment plans and help bring them back uh, in line. Um, obviously, we haven't done it uh, on a large scale today, uh, but uh, we understand that these are unprecedented times and we'll make sure that we clarify that process by uh, coming back to council at the next meeting. Councilor Nickel. Hey, Worship. Um, obviously, this is such uncharted territory for us, um, and we really don't know how long this may uh, may go on. Uh, we, I think, all of us, the entire group, want to, and the town as a whole, want to help our residents and businesses as much as possible. We don't want to be tripping over whatever the federal and provincial governments are bringing forward as well. And as this this motion itself, the very first line is that this is our initial response. This is the first time that we've sat as a council. I think it seems like over a month now. So it's just us just getting things rolling. So I think that this is a great uh, great report the staff's already brought together. And I, I hate to get caught up in, in some of the minor details. I know there are many things that are going to change as this goes on, but at least to give this first relief to our residents and businesses is just the ideal thing. And that's what I think that I'd hate to get, up, get us caught in, in the mud when we're trying to do something very good for the rest of the community. So just my two cents. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from members of council on this section? Councillor Ices. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, I'm just wondering a little bit of the uh, the procedure, how, how this would work. Uh, like a lot of people have their taxes already pre-authorized. And um, so we would have, in that situation, someone would actually have to stop their pre-authorization from going through before the taxes get deferred. Um, that's that to me. That's a pretty significant step, and and we should be able to have a good gauge by how many people actually take that step. Um, do we have an idea of what percentage of our tax collection is done on a pre-authorized basis? Um, I'm not sure if that's a fair question for you, Mr. Malashin. You're fairly new. Is and I don't. Is Audrey on the call? I'm not sure if she is. I, I, uh, Audrey is not on the call. I don't believe. But just we are assessing those numbers at this point in time, just to see the impact. Uh, we we are tallying that information. We also have provided for that those pre-authorized payments can be waived and held back. Um, with consent for an app, a simple application through the residents, they can submit it through customer service, through, through to the website to to uh, have the pre-authorized payments stopped. And as well, in addition, there will be no interest or penalties uh, for the tax that has not been collected on those payments as well. So we yes, we are trying to determine the full impact of that and uh, create a comprehensive list of those that are on pre-authorized payments. Go ahead, Kevin. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So I think part of the messaging should be that just because we've deferred uh, the taxes that are, are owed, um, our residents have to physically stop their pre-authorized payment to take advantage of that. Because if human nature is, you hear something in the news and you think it applies, you wanted it to apply, you actually physically have to stop your pre-authorized payment for that to happen. So just, just a comment. Uh, through your worship, uh, yes, the, the, um, 
the messaging is going to be created, but we didn't want to put messaging until this was actually approved by council. So we wanted the, these recommendations approved and we move, will move forward with communication. And like I said, a very simple, frequently asked questions document has been created for distribution once, if, and when uh, council does approve this motion. Thank you, and I apologize, Councillor Ices. <laughs> I wanted to say that that is, it's the communication is the key. That's certainly one of the big criticisms that we've heard so far about the federal uh, package is that it's hard to understand. People don't know where to apply or which piece to apply for. So um, certainly we're trying to help uh, residents with that through our economic development uh, group accelerates but it that's definitely I think going to be one of the big pieces of this is it has to be really easy to understand um, and and because we're we're going to the end of June but then also giving delegated authority to staff that they could extend that longer if required and of course we'll be watching this closely and none of us knows you know what what where we're going to be in a in a day let alone in in a month so i think uh, i think it's a really good first step anyone else councillor payne Counsel, councillor payne you have to hold it down the whole time you're talking hold down the space bar okay. Okay, I just I just want to say that um, if the residents are hearing this or when they read this in the newspapers, they're going to be able to sleep at night because this is this is something that I know is going to be draining a lot of the residents. And, you know, like like Dan said, this or Councillor Davidson said, the small businesses and the restaurants like they're not they can't open because of this. So people aren't going anywhere. So they really do need this assistance. And I am proud of all of us for doing this. Thank you, Councillor Payne. Uh, but now that Councillor Payne spoke, it did make me come up with, uh, with a couple of questions about how do we deal with our land lease communities being Sandy Cove Acres and Royal Oak Estates? Because I believe their taxes are somehow built into their um, monthly payments. Mr. Rayner. Thank you, Worship. Um, it's, a, it's an excellent question and there are likely unintended consequences uh, whenever we make these kinds of moves. Um, so we will reach out to the owner of uh, uh, Sandy Cove Park Ridge, uh, who has an excellent relationship with the town uh, and we will work through those, uh, those issues. It's similar to the, the question earlier about how will the mortgage companies manage this if in fact they don't have to make the payments, will they be passing that benefit on to the person who's paying the mortgage? These are very good questions and, and with our, our partners in the community, we'll work hard to try to make sure that this benefit actually reaches the people it's intended to. Um, but your worship, it is important, I think in the messaging uh, and those listening to understand that uh, the taxes will be due at some point in the near future. And so it's important that people don't get lulled into a false sense that, that whatever was due has disappeared and won't be due. You know, it's important that people understand, at least at this point, uh, it's just a matter of the due date that's getting really pushed from a practical perspective. And, and if people can make their payments, we're encouraging them to continue to do that so that they don't have this very, very high hill to climb uh, come, uh, you know, June or whenever these measures are no longer in place. Thank you, Worship. Thank you, that's a good point. Councillor Payne? If, if, if I can just sort of uh, say something about that as well. Um, as far as Sandy Cove residents are concerned, um, I would say 99.9% .9 of the residents, they're using their pensions to pay the rent. So that, that doesn't change if the rent will be paid because they, they, everybody has to budget for how they're living in Sandy Cove. And just from experience, like pensions pretty much pay the rent and then whatever they have left over, they have for their essential, like the food and whatever, movies, whatever. So I, I don't think we have to worry about Sandy Covers that way. Um, what we're have, what we're doing right now. There's a, a group of people in Sandy Cove, 
and Bruce and I included, would just go to the neighbors and take a bag of, of food, canned goods and, and macaroni and cheese or a dozen eggs or something or some milk just to make sure that they do have something. And we're being looked after here. It, it, those, those, those that can help are helping. And th there's, there's so many seniors that we know need the help, but their, their, their pride gets in the way. <laughs> they just feel that they can do it on their own, but they, they, they break down and they, they end up taking some of the goodies and whatnot. So, that's one thing about Sandy Cove. Everyone is so generous with everything. So I think the Sandy Coves are going to be okay. Thanks, Councillor Payne. Yeah, if there's anything that this has shown me over the last little while is just how resilient, kind, and generous our community is. Other questions? Uh, Deputy Mayor Davidson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I noticed that in town we've closed a lot of facilities, uh, recreation, all of that. Have we at this point laid off any town employees at this particular time? That are, If they're not working from home and the, the things aren't operating, have we taken those measures? Uh, Deputy Mayor Davidson, or, or sorry, uh, Mr. Rayner. Sorry, Your Worship, I know you know the answer to this, so uh, um, uh, I, I'm apologize for jumping in. We, uh, we absolutely have not laid off any, any staff working for the town at this time. Uh, we communicated with our staff at the time that the state of emergency was announced at the provincial level um, to ensure that staff would continue to be paid through this three week period while uh, the state of, or sorry, to the end of March for sure. We communicated to staff to the end of the April 6th date that was provided with respect to the schools. Um, and so no, no town staff have been laid off. Um, there are certainly contracts uh, that have come to an end um, that uh, just naturally happen as a result of seasonal transitions and those kinds of things. So I guess I have to be careful how I say that, but certainly not because of COVID-19, uh, the pandemic have we laid staff off. Um, and uh, you know, we're waiting to see uh, what the federal government, what the provincial government does with respect to wages and making sure that people try to stay whole during this period uh, and we continue to assess the situation. Okay, just to follow up your worship. Okay, we, we are kind of veering a little bit off this motion, but um, I'll give you some latitude, Deputy. The only reason I'm looking at the financial considerations uh, in our report here, and I know we're going to be withdraw, we're going to be using reserves to help offset a lot of these deferrals or lack of charges that we're doing. So I'm just looking at the long-term picture after April 6th, um, seeing the impact on our financial budget for 2020. Um, I just want to put it out there that if we have to take those drastic measures, we may have to do that to work with the new budget that's coming forward to council very shortly. That's all, thank you. We, those are discussions that we'll have in the future. I mean, there's there's things that we can obviously do if we if we if we aren't going to have summer camps this summer, then we obviously won't hire the summer camp counselors, that sort of thing. But um, any other questions about this section, which is about the um, interest penalty? So my only other comment on that section was that if I think we need, to, I know it's not technically a deferral because of the way that the, um, that it's because of the work it would be involved in, in making that change. But I think we should still call it a deferral because that's what it is. And if it quacks like a duck and walks like a duck, we should call it a duck. Any, uh, Mr. Rayner? Sorry, Your Worship, uh, just confirming that, that that will be the communication that flows out uh, through our channels uh, after you make a decision tonight. Okay, uh, then we'll move on to the next section, which is section four. And that section has to do with the provisions of the fees and charges in the bylaw. And there's four of them that uh, we're looking at uh, temporarily suspending till the end of June. One has to do with the return item charge, which like, what do they call that? A bounce check or a non-sufficient funds or something? The, the withdrawal of a post-dated check, 
Um, and then the other two are, um, I believe, were requests from the uh, development liaison group, if I'm not mistaken, the zoning compliance letter and the uh, draft plan of subdivision condition extension. Questions or comments on this section? Seeing none, section number five. Uh, that was the sections um, for the reactivation fee the pre-authorization payment plan fee. And I think Councillor Icy spoke to that early. That's so if somebody decides to come off the pre-authorization so that they can defer, we're not gonna charge them to go back on the pre-authorization again. Seeing no hands on that item. Uh, item six uh, talks about the development charge rates, uh, the indexing which is normally done April 1st, and it's talking about moving that to July 1st. Okay, seeing no hands. And then finally, the council receives the recommendation of the Board of In-Services and approves the waiving of the interest and penalty charges related to water and wastewater services for those in need and request assistance as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic impacts. Questions or comments on that section? I'd like to highlight that just a little bit. Um, the in-services board um, approved this, but it's it's come to us because council approves the rates. So um, just to highlight this, this one says um, that it's for those in need and that requests assistance. So people who want the uh, penalty and interest waived, uh, we'll have to actually action it and call in and make sure that it happens versus it won't just happen for everybody. So again, I think it's that's gonna be uh, all about communications. Councillor Waters. Uh, thank you, Worship. I just uh, mentioned to residents of Innisville that the province did today uh, eliminate the peak uh, charges. And so that charges now will only be on the low end uh, for 24/7 until the foreseeable future uh, when we see this, uh, this pandemic end. So that's some good news for residents uh, that their hydro bills should be uh, uh, cheaper, uh, hopefully, uh, even though they're at home 24/7. Thank, thank you, Councillor Waters. Um, thank you for that, and uh, Councillor Orsatti. Sorry, always difficult, takes time to find the button. Um, just on this one as well, that we need to change the date consistently to June 30th to follow with the other items. So I'd be looking for another friendly amendment from the mover and seconder to make the impacts March 1st through to June 30th, 2020. Councillor Fowler and Councillor Waters, that's okay. Um, any other person uh, have any comments uh, about this section? I will tell you that the Empower Board did meet earlier today and they're looking at similar um, wording. Uh, there, was, there wasn't, uh, we, it'll come forward shortly. There was some nuances about how the billing cycles go and everything. So we weren't able to, but it, they'll be looking at also a similar waiving. Um, and to Councillor Waters, that the, um, the, the off peak time of use, um, that the special order, uh, the minister got the special order on yesterday is for 45 days, but it could be extended. Uh, and, and the other nuance was in that letter that it was for residents, small business and farms. So um, didn't include large uh, corporations. So uh, we'll see where that goes. Any other questions or comments on this section? Seeing none, okay, that covers just about the entire uh, recommendation. Uh, but before we vote on that, I just wondered if there's anything else that uh, that we've missed that people wanted to think about uh, might go in that or or anything to do with this um, with this motion. Councillor Isis. 
Uh, thank you, Worship. I, I think earlier on we mentioned the possible option to extend the date for another two months. Is, is that written into the motion somewhere, or or, uh, or was that just a uh, suggestion? No, I think we um, got the friendly amendment for that. And if maybe I could ask um, Deputy Clerk Toma to give us the exact wording on that amendment. Uh, yes, uh, Your Worship, the amendment was added in when you were dealing with that clause. It is that interest and penalty charges on outstanding property taxes be temporarily waived for March 1 through June 30th, 2020. And that council hereby delegates to the treasurer the ability to extend this waiver period for a further 60 days at their discretion. And that bylaw 02620 be approved to give effect to the recommendation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so seeing no other hands, uh, the vote now will be on the entire recommendation as a whole. Um, Mr. Rayner? Your Worship, thanks very much. Before the vote uh, happens, I just wanted to draw your attention uh, and, and the public's uh, to the rest of the content that's in the staff report, uh, which does talk to the other measures that the town has taken uh, to try to uh, address COVID-19 uh, and the pandemic. Um, I certainly won't take any time now, Your Worship, to do that, but I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to that. Uh, the staff uh, at the town, as well as uh, so many of our community partners, um, have really gone out of their way already uh, and uh, just a tremendous amount of work that has gone into uh, trying to adapt to this new normal situation, trying to address the community's needs. Uh, we've also done two surveys to get uh, a real um, quick check of what people need right away so that we can target our resources uh, and our priorities there. And we're working on uh, a more significant uh, discussion uh, council at the next regular meeting, but wanted you to know uh, that those uh, those there's significant effort going in uh, already. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you for that. And I think that is something worth noting when we do uh, go out with the communication that it includes the entire package of all of the assistance that we've um, done uh, or put forward and worked on over this very short period. And uh, again, commending staff for that. The other quick thing I'd like to, oh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor Davidson. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'm just, uh, I was listening to the um, minister this afternoon uh, in the package, economic package that was released today. They mentioned several tens of millions of dollars that'll be handed down to municipalities to assist us at this process. I know it's just happened this afternoon, so I'm sure we ha our staff haven't had a chance to look at it. But can we make sure that any monies we receive from the province that we clarify where that money came from and that we let it, the people know how we're using it to offset costs for the municipality during this period? Thank you for that. I did uh, have the opportunity to be on a call with Minister uh, Clark, Minister Elliott, Minister, who else was there? Uh, I, can I can remember his name. He's the Treasury, uh, President of the Treasury Board, and also uh, Parliamentary Assistant Chow for, um, sorry, Parliamentary Assistant Cho for Finance. And the money that's coming directly to municipalities is 250 million. And while that sounds like a lot of money, when you think of that, that there's 444 municipalities in Ontario, and you know one of them is Toronto, uh, 250 million is not a, a large uh, sum, but it is welcome. There's no doubt about it. And there was some other uh, things in there that will help municipalities too. The deferral of the education portion of the of the property tax bill or our next payment that we, because when we get property taxes, about 25% of that we send directly to the Ministry of Education. So um, they're deferring that payment, understanding that we're doing these deferrals for our residents, they're deferring that payment to um, education for 90 days. 
And there's some other, there's a lot of, there's about 17 billion of direct money going to healthcare and, and uh, residents. But uh, the, the, the portion going directly to municipalities was quite small. Um, so the other, what I did want to say though, is uh, one of the things I've really noticed through this whole, it seems like months, but it's only been like two weeks, has been the unprecedented level of cooperation between all levels of government and all political parties and stripes, everybody working together, and and it's been it's been really refreshing and to to work that way with both uh, the federal and the provincial levels of government who really understand that we're where the rubber meets the road and we're where the need is the most and and we're we we get the feeling on the ground first and and they're um, they've been very good about all that. So with all that said, um, I think it's time to call the motion, unless there's any more comments. So all in favor of the motion as amended. I see everyone's hand, so that is moved unanimously. Thank you very much. And because I can, I'm gonna take a little bit of liberty right now before we go to the confirming bylaw to just ask if there was any other business that we uh, needed to deal with tonight before uh, before we go to the confirming bylaw? Councillor Fowler. Um, yes, as I've been traveling through the community with the uh, the, the, the most uh, vulnerable residents helping get supplies and whatnot, I've encountered a few scenarios where um, stores uh, that are supposed to be doing deliveries and takeouts are uh, allowing people inside the premises uh, or or for personal property where people have like large gatherings, which is not what we're trying to promote at this time. Under the current uh, state of emergency regulations, what can we do to reinforce the fact that this is not the best idea for everybody? It, it actually tends to put others at risk, which is what we're trying to do, flatten the curve, so to speak. As, what can we do under this, um, under the current state? Thanks. I'll, I'll speak to the, the restaurant piece. Um, and that was the other minister that was on the call today, Minister Jones, the Solicitor General. Um, so they have, she's given directions to the uh, police chiefs across Ontario that they are to enforce that uh, particular section. So any of those special orders that were given, so uh, gatherings over 50 um, and restaurants not doing other than takeout or um, or drive through. So if you let the police chief know, um, and there's specific fines in in the direction from the solicitor general that says what the fines are for businesses who who don't follow those rules. Mr. Rayner, did you have something else? Thank you, Worship. No, just uh, confirming that we are prioritizing bylaw uh, infraction and, and complaints at this time. Uh, and certainly those are on our list, uh, Councillor Fowler, uh, and working with the police to try to address those uh, situations. Uh, I can say that uh, the situations that I am aware of, um, those business owners have complied uh, once they've been uh, you know, spoken to about the specifics of the order uh, and clarity has been provided. Uh, we have not had anyone, as far as I know, uh, you know really resisting. Uh, I think most people understand what we're trying to do in this very limited window where we can try to affect community transmission of COVID-19. Uh, thanks very much, Your Worship. Councillor, did you have something to add? Um, just one quick question as to the regard of the scope of control we have over this. Uh, the province has stated 50 people or less. Are we able to supersede that by any means and reduce it to a smaller number under the under the uh, premise of safety for the citizens, considering what we've seen with other countries and how it's spread so rapidly? That just seems more of a feasible option. Uh, Mr. Rayner, can we override the special orders from the Solicitor General? Uh, Your Worship, members of council, as, as far as I know, we're not able to override a specific direction from the province. 
Um, this is where the province would invoke that language you've heard before about we are children of the province uh, and uh, they are the superior level of government and able to direct us to do things. Um, and certainly, uh, Mr. Parkin may have uh, comments to add, Your Worship, uh, but uh, our energy and resources are going into the education, uh, the promotion, the marketing, the campaigns, we're putting up signs, you know, really trying to bring home to our community. Um, and we're looking for those community champions that will help, you know, that with that self-enforcement. Um, there's been some great suggestions about how to approach people to have this conversation about social distancing um, and to uh, respect the not getting together in large groups. Um, and, and the advice is not to, you know, not to come at it from a conflict perspective, uh, but to help people understand what it is we're trying to achieve at this time. Uh, and, and lives literally depend on our ability to do this. You need not look farther than New York to start to see what happens when, this, when you don't hit this part of the curve uh, with everything you've got, uh, you end up with serious, serious consequences. So we're, we're taking the tact of education and promotion, uh, but certainly as this develops, Her Worship does have some significant powers under the Emergency Management Act, and we'll be exploring those further and we'll be able to report to council in more detail. Thank you. Councillor Sadi. Thank you. Um, one of the other things, uh, Your Worship, um, that I wanted wondered if the town could help direct um, our residents to is the announcement today of the support to entrepreneurs who are self-employed, uh, one person, so it could be the hairdresser doing uh, work in their home, that they're not entitled to EI, and now they're entitled to this new program of up to $2,000 a month for up to four months. And if we could um, put something on our town website through Economic Development Department or something, a link as to where these uh, entrepreneurs, Innisfil uh, residents can go uh, to apply that can direct them how, because um, they're very concerned they have nothing coming in because they are following the town's um, you know, uh, self-isolation, trying to support that, but I think they, they're in the greatest need of help. Mr. Bellinishan. You're on mute still, Mr. Melanishan. My button didn't go off, my apologies. Um, the, just as I mentioned earlier, the town website and in particular Innisfil Accelerates.ca does have a lot of links that Economic Development Department is updating on a daily, if not hourly basis to help small businesses. And there is inclusion on the EI support. And as these new measures that have been just unveiled in the last few hours have roll out, we will continue, the Economic Development Department is continuing to update their, the website. So those links are always there. Other questions? Okay, thanks. Uh, Councilor Waters. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to mention one thing is I'd like to thank uh, the IT staff for uh, setting this all up. Uh, it's really quite innovative and I'm really glad that this is something we, we, we were going to start doing in the future anyway, so it's nice that we uh, uh, we were able to trial run it, unfortunately, during a bad time that we're having right now. So I just want to uh, just point out uh, thanks to the staff for, uh, for able to get, getting this all together for us. And last but not uh, least, just a thanks uh, and a shout out to all the staff who are, uh, who are, are, are working behind the scenes uh, to still make the town work. Thank you for that. So now I would ask uh, for a mover and a seconder for the confirming bylaw, and that's moved by Councillor Arsati and seconded by Councillor Van Berkel. All in favor? And is there any final announcements before we move to adjourn for our first, very first virtual meeting, which I thought it went fairly smoothly? Deputy Mayor. I love the Brady Bunch approach <laughs> tonight. So I want to say thanks to the staff and everybody, but it's kind of interesting seeing it from this format. Uh, it's going to be interesting for all of us, but uh, thank you so much for everybody's effort. Thanks. Councillor Sadi. 
Uh, yes, Your Worship and, and uh, Deputy Mayor, I want to say that your videos, uh, Your Worship, I think are very helpful. They're very positive to the residents and, and for the other councillors that are sending that out. I think we need to give the positive message. There's enough negative news on the media and there's many residents that are on their own in a home without any uh, like yourself, Your Worship, uh, that uh, have no family members and can only Skype with them. And so I, I think the positive messages are more, just as important now as, as the updates as well. So to keep those up and uh, it's good seeing everyone uh, because my current coworkers, which are my two cats are rather lazy and can't get a cup of coffee. Thanks everyone. I, I miss you all. It's great to see everyone. Uh, these, these are not the best circumstances, but we're, we're doing our best. And, um, and I think that uh, the people of the town know that we've got their back and, uh, and we will get through this together. So having said that, I will ask that the recommendation that council adjourn at, somebody has the time? 731 and that's moved by Councillor Nickel and seconded by <laughs> Councillor Ices. All those in favor? That's carried. So uh, public, I'll be interested in finding out what you think. Um, give us your feedback on how this went, what we could do differently and uh, staff who, who are all black, I want you to all turn your, turn your cameras on now so we can see you all, please. Thank you all for being here and for all of your support. And um, we wish you a good evening. Oh, Count, uh, Mr. Rayner. Thank you. Your Worship, I, I just as the meeting is, wraps up, I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, echo your comments and thank uh, staff for all of their hard work. Um, we have uh, so many staff that continue to deliver the very high level of service that you've come to expect and that uh, the community appreciates. Uh, and they are working under some very, very different conditions uh, with significant uh, sanitation and uh, uh, other protocols to try to be as safe as possible, which is delaying the work and requires more energy uh, and more risk. So we appreciate what they're doing. Um, and I just wanted to also thank all of the families that have now welcomed people home, um, uh, which is uh, an interesting situation all by itself. Uh, as you may can, as you may be able to hear from my uh, nine-month-old son in the background, and then finally, Your Worship, I just wanted to thank our One Town One Team partners. Uh, the cross collaboration uh, uh, has been exceptional over the last uh, little while uh, with this emergency. The emergency control group has been activated. The police, the fire, uh, uh, water, wastewater, uh, hydro, library have all worked uh, seamlessly together to deliver the services uh, that we. Uh, have over the last little while. It's, it's quite exceptional. Uh, and finally, Your Worship, I just wanted to thank you for your leadership during this time. Uh, there is nothing more um, um, reassuring to staff than to know that we have a mayor who's connected, uh, who understands the big picture, who understands what's going on, uh, both provincially and federally, uh, has a calm, steady hand to work through these situations. Uh, and I think we're in very good hands. So I wanted to thank you, Your Worship, for that. And everyone have a good night. Thank you. And finally, I think the person who really des deserves the uh, applause this evening, and he hasn't turned his camera on yet, is Dave Ross from our IT department who made all this happen. Yay, Dave. Thank you very much. So with that, I'll say good evening to everybody and we will, uh, we will be back on April the 8th for our next meeting. And uh, now that we've got this first one under, under our belt, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure it'll be quite smooth. So thanks everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody.